everyone and today I cleaned out my shop it was piled with all this old junk and I did that by turning that junk into other more useful junk like this rolling tire stool for the shop check it out I'm Rachel and this is gearhead diva So I know a lot like you guys, stuff just piles up. We do all kinds of different projects, automotive, workshop, around the house. And if you're like me, I don't like to use the word hoarding. That's a little too strong. But I always like to keep things, old car parts, maybe things I remove and repair. You never know when you're gonna need them. Like old screws, bolts, washers, nuts. I have a pile of small bits. Well, I had a stack of old tires from all of my cars because the first thing I do when I get a car is of course cold air intake exhaust tune but come on you need a new pair of kicks as well right so when the stock one comes off and the new ones go on well what do you guys do with your stock tires and those and those wheels well I always like to keep the wheels because you never know say some down some time down the line maybe you want to sell your car I know you're not thinking about it right now but it can happen and you might decide well I want to put those stock ones back on maybe the buyer doesn't like your your choice you know uh, although I think it's mighty fine so I ended up with a stack of tires from three different cars yeah stacked high so I figured I gotta figure something out to do with these tires and I do a lot of my work in my driveway here in my tiny garage and if you're like me well we've developed some tough derrieres from scooching around doing brake jobs and scooching around doing oil changes and other jobs so I figured what's a really good way to just slide around and make life a little bit easier so I'm gonna get up off, out of here and check this out so I had this tire running around now this is a 16 inch just passenger uh, wheel here or tire and you can see the sidewall is pretty nasty look at this tread there's like nothing on there so perhaps there was some fun to be had here so I figured there's got to be something I can use this for I was actually using some of these tires already in the driveway but every time I got up you're sitting there having to lug a heavy tire and it pretty much well sucks so check out how I got started so here you see me measuring everything. So I'm trying to get all my holes as evenly spaced as possible. So that fancy level and then and, and that bubble there, well, I didn't use any of that. That was just long enough to cover the diameter of the wheel. And after that, I started drilling. Now for this, you may want to use gloves because some of these tires do have metal bands going across. This one is so old and soft that, heck, I didn't have any problems drilling through. And I was using the biggest drill bit that I had because I found with these tires that they are a little bit self-healing. So when you try and put a rope through those holes, it's always tough. And I see some of you with your messages and comments coming in. So if you are watching on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, type in those comments. I see them come in and we can chat together. I can answer your questions or you can tell me how amazing or atrocious this thing ended up turning out. I welcome all of your opinions. Well, mostly. <laughs> Anyways, so after all the holes were drilled, then I took a file, made them all nice and neat, and then came the weaving part. Well, basket weaving turns out isn't my thing, but I gave it my best go. So I bought the thickest cord that I could find, because think about it, I want something that's gonna support a queen's derriere, not some little derriere. I'm talking a queen's derriere. So if you two sport a king or queen size derriere, then definitely strike those likes, because I wanna know that I'm not alone. So the idea here was just to thread it through, and you saw that 
that I marked some of the holes in red and that just kind of helped me keep track of where I wanted to start my horizontal patterning and you can see I went up and down and interweaved that way and in the end I think this is gonna you know in my mind I was like this is gonna look pretty good and the entire spool of rope that I was using was huge now probably a best to have cut that down so I had a lot less to manage but I know that I want the maximum left over as possible you know for other projects and you know unhoarding and all that so if you look at the knot that I tied when I was done it sits on top of the wheel and I did this on purpose because think about it this is fresh clean rope and I am sitting on it all cozy wow my derriere is gonna start to stretch this out and what I did was after I weaved it I actually went through and pulled every single length as taut as I could before tying it up top here and having the knot at the top here makes it a lot easier for me to access it and pull everything taut again once the rope kind of uh, gets cozy and it's proper length after being sat upon so many times. So I figured that would just make my life easier. So with this all roped up, well, now it's time to start working on the bottom half. We'll make it comfy here as we check this out. So I took a piece of wood, two feet by two feet, and it turns out that was the perfect diameter for this tire. Now, some of you fancy types, you know, probably want to use a compass to measure out that perfect circle. But those of you that have been watching my videos for a long time, well, you all know that I'm a bit of an eyeballer. Well, a lot of an eyeballer. So I just go for it. And after all my jigsawing, it turns out I got a pretty circular base there. You know, a couple maybe pointy edges that nothing that a hundred grit sandpaper couldn't take care of. And I went ahead and did this to the entire surface because it was all splintery and I just wanted to be able to grab it without hurting myself. So once the the base was done it's time for a test fit we all know that right so let's check that out so I have the wheel here ready to go and the idea for these casters was to position them as close to the edge as possible for maximum derriere support. Think about it, I don't wanna be rolling down the driveway and flip over, so I wanted to space these things out. You know, like putting nice wide tires on your sports car. That's why we do it, right? So I started drilling all the holes for that. Now, my strategy here was that the holes closest to the outside of the wood were gonna go through the tire. That way, the wheels, the, the wood board, and the tires were all be attached at that point and of course well you know it's got to look pretty too so I went ahead and put a coat of paint there but interestingly I had to wait days in order to complete this project because it's been raining all week so I got up early and I noticed man this storm was rolling in uh, this is I admit worst paint job ever but I saw the clouds rolling in it was super just humid outside and I went for it and those winds were picking up so you saw me spray painting that down holding the can practically like right on the piece of wood because more of the paint blew back at me than I actually got on the piece of wood but finally I did get it uh, you know red enough and I do admit rain started coming down and I went and picked it up and continued the project and listen, I ain't gonna lie, the thing was a little tacky still, but we kept going because that's what we do. We gotta turn this junk into other junk. So let's continue and wow. <laughs> so Peter DM 22 why do you have to buy a new pickup every three to four years here in PA? What are they putting on the roads? Okay, so they are not putting enough roads on the roads because after all that snow, we get so many holes and yeah <laughs> well mostly because I like new wheels you know I don't like you know car rolls off stock you do some things for performance and then you do some things for looks and my favorite looks things are new wheels so got all the wheels back on it was all test fitted anyways and here's the strategy 
First, you're gonna have to rotate that piece of wood to the original position of where those teeth bite up. Uh, and it may take a couple rotations, but you'll find that it's gonna sit nicely. Flip over the tire and then start to tighten those nuts on the other side. So I pre-tightened all the nuts on the inner portions of the casters, but on the bolts on the most outside of that board, I went ahead and attached them to the tire. So I figured this is enough anchor points for casters. That's, you know, eight anchor points on this tire. So I think I'm pretty safe. Now, those of you using a tire with a much larger sidewall, well, you might be able to run all four of those bolts through that sidewall. But for me, just having those eight anchor points, I think is enough. I'm not doing too much off road or anything like that so this has been it so what do you guys think pretty useful not so useful turning junk into to more junk but what I found pretty cool is this red here you can see all of the tools that you're putting in and because we're using I didn't um, uh, put another piece of wood here which I thought about doing with like a foam cushion you know look at stepping it up a little bit my driveway wrenching but I'm actually glad that I went with this approach because as you take things off the car those 10 millimeter sockets especially you can go ahead and put them on the red surface so tools usually go on the red surface and then you can use the inner portion of your tire to hide all of those bolts not screws everything that you remove so you can find them so you can just roll this aside you know that you have everything you need for your project in here and then when you're ready to start up again, you just roll your caddy. It's kind of like a homemade caddy. So I would love to hear your guys' projects. What kind of junk in your shop have you turned into something that's more useful junk? Post your pictures below your comments. We stream Gearhead Diva live every Tuesday, unless I'm traveling, but I always stream live Tuesdays, Wednesdays, we do our live builds, which means it's your chance to get behind the scenes with us and watch us build our projects. And we cover some of our fails here, like the painting and, and some things that go wrong. But during our live streams on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. EDT, you actually get to see that go down live. Like all the fails just happen and you're like, <gasps> like that. And some of you have been super helpful with this because if you review our videos, this was one of our live stream hangouts. And because the rope is so long, Oftentimes I lost where I was in the pattern. So you guys were real instrumental saying, you're pulling it the wrong way, go the other way. So you guys rock. So until next time, post your projects, post your comments, because after this, I'll be back online and continue the chat. So again, I'm Rachel DeBarros and this has been Gearhead Diva.